And you mentioned uh, Phil Agee, and we have a surprise guest. He's not on the program, but uh, we have his son, Chris Agee, here today, executive editor of Covert Action Magazine, to give us a few lessons from his <clears throat> father. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Can you, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rachel, uh, Frank, all of you who put this e event together, and to all of you who have joined the webinar and uh, are watching online. Uh, my name is Chris Agee. I'm the executive editor of Covert Action Magazine and an adjunct professor at the City University of New York and the State University of New York. I'm also the son, as uh, Rachel mentioned, of, of Philip Agee, former CIA case officer and whistleblower, who provided a firsthand expose of the Central Intelligence Agency. Let me just first say that as I registered for this, um, this webinar, I was asked uh, to join a Facebook group, which I did. And it said, do you have a family member or friend that has been affected by the Cold War? <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, it upended my whole life. Um, you know, it also gave me a front seat onto the crimes of our era. As we have been discussing, uh, we are all victims in many ways. Let me explain and describe a few significant lessons from my father, Philip Agee, um, uh, who taught me. Um, and uh, I, I, uh, I thought I'd share those um, uh, principles around a, a couple of stories. The first is um, deb debunking the myth of the Cold War, understanding US plutocratic interests and third world revolutionary movements. The second principle was internationalism. Um, who can say no to international solidarity, right? And the third is political activism, uh, keeping our eyes on the prize. All right, so what are we talking about here? Uh, back uh, in 1979, when I was um, starting high school, I was in a, uh, a history class and I was being told what, uh, what the uh, pol international political situation was. And the teacher um, was presenting these graphs, which he gave us like a flyer and it had two big bubbles. And one bubble said like, the United States and the other bubble said like um, uh, the Soviet Union. And so he presented and, it, and the title was the bipolar model. And I took this home to my dad and I said, what the hell is this all about? And he said, okay, sit down, son, let me explain. All right, so he said, well, wait a minute, it's not that simple as these two models. Uh, but actually that um, oftentimes, for example, in cases like Angola, Iran, um, uh, places like, um, you know, uh, 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 Guatemala, what had happened was that people were trying to struggle for um, their own uh, sovereignty and independence and access to their own resources. And, and so he gave me a, a, a book and he said, read this. I was 15 years old and it was called The People's History of the United States. So by all means, everybody grab that book if you haven't already. Howard Zinn wrote it, A People's History of the United. And since then, my life changed. Um, from then on, I, then on in that class, I became the class dissident and organized um, the students in my class to, to take on the official narrative. Uh, this was part of many lessons from my father. Another one involved a summer job, for example. He gave me between my high school and sophomore year, my high school sophomore year, he, said, he asked me to organize the umpteen filing cabinets of newspaper clippings on, on my father. And, and, by, and I couldn't believe it as I was pulling them all out. You know, it was, a, it was sort of a boring summer job, but the entire room was filled with all these clippings about how my father was drunk and despondent, KGB double agent, traitor, all of that sort of stuff. And I was like sitting in the living room with my, you know, my father. And I was like, what do you mean? You know, he, he, he's, a, uh, uh, he's all these things. And so the propaganda campaign against people who stand up against uh, these the, the Cold War myth and all of these issues is, is truly uh, uh, gargantuan. <clears throat> and so um, uh, the US, I, I became to learn that the US, that US far, foreign policy actually serves the plutocratic elite and their efforts. And so I, began, I came to learn that the Cold War myth serves the following purposes, to distract the masses from imperial strategy to justify huge military budgets for geopolitical control, all for the purpose of securing cheap access to raw materials, cheap access to labor, international markets for corporate interests, 
and then and then ultimately to oppress efforts to build truly democratic societies politically, economically, and socially. The examples are endless: Iran, Guatemala, Vietnam, Chile, Angola, Nicaragua. You you know just to mention the few during during that during uh, the middle of the uh, last century. And so what we have is um, an imperialist strategy that, by the way, did not begin with the Cold War, as we have mentioned uh, various times during this, uh, these testimonies, but goes back to the founding of this country. Uh, read a book by William Bloom called Killing Hope. Um, and um, so uh, an another story, for example, if you just take a look at my father's works, you can see that uh, when, for example, he was stationed in Uruguay uh, as a CIA case officer, while he was told when he was recruited that he was going to be building freedom and democracy for the rest of the world, um, he, he found that what he was actually doing was like rounding up dis, uh, dissidents, like human rights activists, labor rights activists. And he would meet with the, uh, regularly with the chief of police. And um, at one point, the chief of police says to him, hey, uh, you know, um, you know as, as he's meeting with him, he's hearing these sounds of screaming going on uh, in the background. And he's saying to the chief of police, hey, Hefe, what's, what's that sound? Uh, what's the, who's that screaming? And he goes, oh, Philip, Felipe, don't you remember? Those are the people who you gave us last week. Okay, so he started to realize that the work that he was doing was, he was really acting as, as a secret policeman for international, a multinational corporate interests. And there's a video, Alf. I'm sorry. Um, okay, all right. So um, I know I only have um, probably a minute or two left. Um, so the second uh, lesson that he taught me was, a very basic one called international solidarity, internationalism. And, and you know, what, who could say no to being friends with people around the world? Okay, so he said, hey, you wanna come to Cuba? I was 13 years old and had a skateboard. And um, I said, sure. And I went to Cuba via uh, East Berlin, by the way, it's a long story. But um, I ended up finding that uh, people were very interested in, uh, in being friends and developing a society that, 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 that um, prioritized friendship with all peoples, food, shelter, clothing, education, and healthcare as a national priority and anti-imperialism and self-determination. So you can go through the examples with, re with respect to Cuba and how the United States has tried to destroy that um, uh, effort to, to build that stuff. Video next. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and, uh, and then, and so like, for example, one of the jobs that my father had as a CIA agent was to um, literally put a, 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 a an incri uh, incriminating message into a to toothpaste tube and plant it on a Cuban diplomat and get that diplomat taken into custody. I mean, so this is the kind of stuff that, you know, when you go into the details uh, and you figure that stuff out. Um, so lastly, uh, there are many more stories to tell. My time has run out. Um, I would simply sit, say that um, we are doing the best we can to uh, continue the work of my father. We've relaunched Covert Action. Read it, um, uh, share it, and um, get involved. And um, we'd, we'd be very, very happy to, uh, if anyone wants to write for us, for example, or even get involved and help, that would be great. So ultimately what he taught me was educate yourself about these things, educate those around you, and get involved. That's what we need to do to, to have an impact on all of this stuff that we're talking about. Anyway, thank you very Chris. much. Uh, <laughs> thank okay. you very much, Chris. <laughs> and now Frank will introduce our next speaker who will give uh, testimony. Yes, thank you. I just want to say to Chris, your father is a big hero of mine. I went to Cuba in 2000. I got to meet him <laughs> at his travel agency. He's in my film when I learned U.S. foreign policy. And you mentioned two other heroes of mine, Howard Zinn and William Bloom. And thanks for your presentation, Chris. Thank 